It is a while since I've taken an ionizer apart. Uh, yeah, I know some of you don't like it when I make ionizer videos because I make quite a lot of them, but I find this subject fascinating. Others can't get enough of the ionizer videos. But what's interesting about these particular ones is that I bought this one a while ago. I bought this one recently. They appear to have identical circuit boards inside. And if I plug this one in to this safe adapter and I bring in a meter, Notice it's got a little button to turn it on and off. This is so pointless. I don't know why they do that. I'll just leave it where it's set, actually, here. New test leads. New test leads with sharper points on them because the other ones were quite blunt. These are also slightly shorter test leads because the other ones were actually a bit too long as well. Blunt and long. So if I ground the negative of the uh, meter's test leads and I bring the other one close to the emitters, it will show a voltage, a negative voltage, and if I bring it up to about half an inch from the needle, it shows about 20-ish volts, which is five times higher uh, ion output, I'd guess, than a conventional voltage multiplier type one. Maybe there's an advantage to using these little electronic modules. For those who aren't familiar already with ionizers, they apply a high negative voltage with respect to ground to either sharp needles Tingle? No, no tingle. Tingle? No tingle. Uh, or, in the case of these ones, carbon fibre bundles, which are very, effectively, lots of tiny sharp needles. And when you apply the high voltage, it creates an electrostatic charge in the air that charges it up negative. And when uh, dust particles get also charged negative from the negatively charged air with excess electrons, they tend to precipitate out to what they perceive as grounded surfaces. And that could just be a wooden surface, what you wouldn't even consider to be grounded. It could be walls. These things, if you plug this in a socket, it will create a bit of a mess around the socket. But all that stuff that's in the wall that's made the mess... Uh, I've got a picture of that here. Hold on. I'll reuse this picture. This... This is an ionizer that's been sitting on a shelf in a slightly smoky area, and if you, you can see what it's precipitated around out of the air around it, it's created quite a strange pattern in the process. That's what they do. They make a terrible mess, but hi, better on the table and walls than in your lung. Lung. Or lungs, even. But let's open this up. There's also an added thing with these. Because these ones have the emitters directly in the vicinity of the wall when you plug it in, theoretically there'll be enough of a ion flow, I mean, it effectively short circuits the ion flow, but will create a little trace level of ozone. And ozone is villainized as being a terrible gas, but it's actually a natural gas. It's part of air at low levels and is safe at low levels, beneficial at low levels indoors because it gets used up quite quickly indoors. So this circuit board has what looks like a microcontroller and a power supply. And then a tiny little transformer here, and I can see what looks like a high voltage diode and a capacitor, uh, but they're all covered in silicone schmoo leading up to these electrodes here. So I'm going to take a picture of this and then reverse engineer it, and we can take a look at the schematic. So one moment, please, while I do that. It has been de -schmoored. So let's explore. I ended up taking the circuit board out of this one. It doesn't really matter. There are identical circuit boards. I can swap them between the cases if I desire. Interesting to note that the case itself has a little connector and the connector goes onto the circuit board to provide it power. It makes it very modular. It's actually quite a nice design, but a bit odd because they've used a double-sided circuit board, but they didn't really need to use that, but they always use it anyway. Every track, including this one here, uh, could have been done differently. They could have taken the capacitor over to this pin of the uh, rectifier and then just taking a direct link from here to here. It's very strange that they've done it this way. It's uh, And there's also some circuitry oddities. But anyway, we'll get rid of the back of the circuit board here and we'll take a look at the front and I'll show you the key components of this. So we have a simple capacitive dropper based on the mains come in here, a capacitor here with a little resistor under it, an undersized resistor under it, a bridge rectifier, current limiting resistor, a Zener diode to clamp that, and then that basically charges up this capacitor and it powers the microcontroller. The other thing associated with the microcontroller, it's only using two pins. It's, uh, well, three pins if you consider that there's a 2K resistor here just pulling pin four to the uh, negative rail. That's presumably, well, that's very PIC-12-ish because that's the pin that's used the programming voltage. Um, there's a button 
going to the zero volt rail as well from one of the inputs and it also has a 100 nanofarad capacitor across it which is going to be a bit brutal in the contacts but it's just basically the simplest debounce circuit they could do and then the output the one output pin uh, drives the led via a 2k resistor so not much current but also another 2k resistor to switch on this transistor which then activates the high voltage circuitry the high voltage circuitry has a current limiting resistor here and one there and they've put in the option to put a uh, standard surface mount non-surface mount through hole ones there but they've used uh, two 10k resistors and then there's a rect half-wave rectifying diode and a capacitor that charges up 100 nanofarad quite high value in series the tiny little coil that's wrapped around the core of this uh, two section bobbin and um, they're using that quite high voltage for two sections and then there's what appears to be and this is the mystery component here x04 i'm guessing it's a sidac i've never come across a surface mount style uh, marked X04. I don't really know what that is. That's strange. Um, and then the output of that, because th this will then provide, when that transistor turns on, it activates the circuitry and provides a stream of continuous pulses, and that uh, is rectified by a single high voltage diode. Don't know what its rating is because there are, the way they mark these diodes, they don't put text on them. They put chevrons and shapes, but usually just at one end, just to basically avoid too much conductive ink, I guess. I'm not really sure because it's high voltage. But that is then charging the 6 kV 100 picofarad capacitor up. And then there's a current limiting resistor, grossly undersized, uh, 10 meg ohm going to the output. And the carbon fiber emitters themselves are the little bunch of carbon fibers uh, and a wire laid into a crimp, crimped, and then a bit of heat shrink put over it. And for those of you who want to make your own carbon fiber emitters, if you go on eBay and find rolls of the underfloor heating wire that is based in carbon fiber when you strip it it is a bunch of carbon fibers like that and it makes perfect emitters right here let's bring in the schematic so you can see the circuitry in this and the, and the oddities i was going to break this down into two sections and i thought no i'll just combine it into one page so I'll zoom in a little bit more so we can get close and intimate with that schematic. The incoming supply has live, it feeds two sections of the circuitry. It feeds the capacitive dropper for the microcontroller and it also goes via this resistor and uh, diode to start to charge the uh, pulse circuit that pulses the transformer. I should perhaps show that they're linked by going like that. That's kind of how you show they're linked roughly. Uh, the neutral comes straight into the bridge rectifier and then feeds all the rest of the circuitry, including the pulse circuitry. The power supply for the microcontroller is very crude and simple. It's a 15 ohm resistor, presumably to limit in rush current. They could have put that on the other side as well. Um, and there's a 5.1 volt zener giving roughly 5 volts uh, across this 220 microfarad capacitor, and that feeds the microcontroller. It's not got much of a load. All, all it's going to power is this LED down here. I shall finish the drawing. with we'll draw the little bits in the LED. And uh, the microcontroller has that resistor going to the zero volt rail, 2K. They've used 2K throughout for most of these resistors in this area. Uh, the capacitor across the uh, button that pulls to the zero volt rail, and then the single output that doesn't just drive the LED to show it's active, but also drives the base of a transistor. The transistor was, hold on, going to have to look at this transistor, a 13001. Very standard transistor, 13001. There is a back EMF protection diode across that. Anyway, when this transistor turns on, it effectively grounds this end of the circuit, and uh, this resistor limits the current, and this one limits the current, and uh, this half-wave rectifies, and it charges this capacitor up in series with the primary of the coil and that transformer. And if you were to look in the end of that transformer, it's shaped like that with its uh, windings, with its two little bobbins. But there'll be a little core and there'll be a couple of wires basically going up, uh, winding around that and then coming back down to the other end, either both at this end or both at the other end. And uh, what it does is uh, it charges and sears that coil. But then this little component here, the SIDAC, the mysterious... What is it called again? It's called the X04. Let's just put X04 there. X04. Odd. Uh, but it, uh, when the voltage gets high enough across that capacitor, it shunts. 
and uh, means that it basically short circuits across this uh, capacitor and coil, so it discharges the capacitor quickly, but it, the current it causes a current pulse in the coil. There is also yet another back EMF-ish type diode, flyback diode perhaps, to, to increase efficiency, I'm not really sure. But anyway, it puts a pulse into that coil, induces a high voltage in the secondary, gets rectified by a high voltage diode, and the 100 pico 6 kV capacitor, 10 mega ohm resistor limits the current out to the carbon fiber brushes, and there's two of them, so I'll put another one in there. There is also a 1 mega ohm resistor just linking um, between either side the transformer, and to be honest, I would have been tempted to put that resistor here instead, because they could have done that easily in the circuit board. That, uh, I'll just put a re-exclamation mark, so that's where I had to put that resistor, just to provide a reference to the sort of ground of the circuitry. Could be wrong, though. wonder why they've done that. Hmm, odd. But that is more or less it. Uh, the fact is 110 to 240 volt means that ultimately on 110 volt, it's going to be slightly less spicy, but it's quite a zesty unit on surprising given the size of the transformer and the simplicity of the circuitry. But it's a zesty unit on 240 volts, so on 110 volts, all that will happen is that the capacitor will charge slightly slower or pulse less often. You might end up with slightly less output in this. Uh, and that is it. A universal module. I wonder how many other ionizers it's used in. I'll maybe have to buy some similar ones and take a look inside them and see if they use the same circuitry. But overall, it looks like a proven design. It's so odd that if you look at the circuit board again, they have the option to put two capacitors in series or just one across there. I think they were just playing safe. It's very hard to measure the voltage across this because you'd need super high impedance uh, circuitry to do so. Um, just sticking a standard meter across is going to load it down so much because ionization takes mm, like sub microamps. It's tiny. It's a very low amount of uh, power. If anything, I would guess that maybe a, a reasonable amount of the current consumption unit is purely just powering the pointless microcontroller. And you could get rid of this. You could put a link across this transistor and just you could get rid of all that circuitry there um, and uh, run this straight to, through to neutral and the system would just operate all the time. It's kind of strange that they've done it this way. You could even put a little LED in Sears of this because the amount of current is limited anyway and it would also act as the uh, as the indicator. But they've, they've got this thing about adding features that aren't needed on-off functions for this. I don't think it's got a timer. I, I certainly left it running and it didn't go off, but maybe it's got a long timer. It just... Uh, there's not a lot of information. Uh, it's got instructions. They're in Chinese. Uh, I could have translated it. If I, I'll do that now, but uh, actually I'll do it right now. One moment, please. Translated, no mention of a timer. All it says is, you know, like this can be used to purify things and it's, it's odorless and colorless and the ions can, you know, purify and cleanse and stuff like that and good for the body and all the usual crap that they usually put out. I mean, ionizers do have that function. They genuinely clean the air, particularly the ones where you mount it well away from a wall, which you can't really do with this. But in the case of this one, it'll create a notable amount of ozone. I could have actually checked that just by, well, A, puts it in a box, with, uh, although it kind of needs to be in the vicinity of a grounded surface. I could have looked at it through my camera because it's very sensitive. It can actually see the purple glow of the corona discharge in the, the needle tips. Um, but they do create an absolutely microscopic quantity of ozone, which uh, has uh, useful effects. But that is it. It's an odd thing. They've overcomplicated it. Most of the circuitry is for this pointless button that turns the green LED on and off and turns the ionizer on and off. But the output is quite zesty, quite impressive. I wonder what that old transformer is. I wonder if you can get the transformers on their own. Uh, but interesting. Well worth taking apart. Quite an interesting and spicy little ionizer.